The exciting thing is, after I film this video, I get to reorganize my bookshelf. What's up, home slices? I got a book haul for you today. This is the biggest book haul I've had in a while. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine books to show you. So yeah, I have a tendency to talk about the books way longer than I should, so I'm gonna try not to do that. Let's go. So the first two books I got while I was home uh, in Vermont for like almost two weeks, and I went to Costco with my mom purely for the cheap books that they have. And I ended up getting two books. One of them my mom actually bought. I wanted to get it, but I was like, I'm only gonna get one. And then she's like, well, no, I'll buy it for you. It'll be my book. But I ended up taking it with me. I'll give it back to her at Christmas. That's Behind the Beautiful Forevers by Catherine Boo. I've heard uh, a lot of good things about this book. It was one of the 10 best books of 2012 from the New York Times. It's a National Book Award winner. It's got a lot of hype behind it. Catherine Boo did a lot of research in Anawadi, which is sort of like a slum uh, outside of Mumbai, sort of in the area. As far as I understand, it re reveals a lot about India and sort of that huge discrepancy between the rich and the poor and people who are just trying to make it. It seems like it'll be a gut-wrenching read. The other book that I grabbed, this was the one that I was originally gonna buy, is Four by Veronica Roth. It's a companion novel to the Divergent series and it's just a bunch of stories about four. You get a glimpse at his life before Triss ever came to Dauntless. You see how Tobias ended up in Dauntless and sort of how he rose in the ranks from, you know, a new nobody, a, technically a stiff, to be the person that Triss sees when she finally arrives. It's a short read and I'd seen this book around but I didn't want to pay $18 for it and then at Costco it was 10 so yeah, jumped right on that one. The next two books I got uh, while I was home as well, these were picked up at Goodwill just because I like to go there occasionally to see what sort of cheap use books they have. The first one is I'm a Stranger Here Myself by Bill Bryson. These books are relatively expensive, so when I find one that's uh, discounted and it's still in relatively good condition, I have to grab it. This is a travel book, and it is him returning to America after being away for 20 years. He comes back with his uh, British wife and his kids, and so he's been, you know, living in Britain for 20 years, and then he comes back uh, to live in America or so it sounds, and uh, just, you know, the differences in life between America and Britain, which I'm sure are really obvious when you haven't been home in a span of 20 years, and I'm sure it will be wonderfully sarcastic, as his writing always is. The other book I picked up is 1776 by David McCullough. This is one I have known about for a long time, and I must say it's very different from most other books that I pick up. This is a purely historical novel about the American Revolution. I do like history, and I feel like I should know more about the American Revolution than I do. Like, I learned stuff in school, but I've forgotten it over the years, and I feel like this book would be a good way to sort of refresh myself and just really know how it all came together because, okay, Americans like to toot their own horns a bit and be like, yeah, the, the Revolutionary War, but like, there are plenty of other countries that have had revolutions, and ours was just pretty sweet because we took on one of the most powerful countries in the world and actually won, so that's cool. But this way I can find out how it happened in greater detail um, in sort of a really like nerdy historical buff fashion. The last five books I have to show you were all received for review. The first of the bunch is The Magic Trick by Levi Stack. This is book two in the card game series. You may recall a while ago that Les and I read the first book in this, The Silent Deal, and it had a very similar cover to this with the whole card inspired thing going on. Also a dig in this cover as well. The Silent Deal was a solid book and Les and I were definitely willing to keep reading the series and we will be reading it together eventually and uh, hopefully trying to like do a dual review on it as well. I don't want to give too much away just because you know, you have the first book and I don't want to spoil anything. It does take place in Russia in the 1800s and it follows two boys, Victor and Romulus. It brings in this whole card game thing where cards have a significant meaning in this society, sort of like a secret of what's going on, why are these cards banned, why do people have certain cards. And although some things were solved at the end of the first book, not everything is, you know, obviously peachy keen, so there's a potential for a second rebellion. And that's what this book is going to cover. 
The other four are all Penguin related books. The first three are from the Penguin Young Readers uh, group, which a lot of people are part of here on booktube. The first one I requested to receive from them is The Young Elites by Marie Lu. She is the person who wrote Legend, which I did read and enjoyed, but didn't really love enough to go seek out the next two books. Uh, this one is the start of what I assume is probably a new series. Our main character's name is Adelina and she is the survivor of a fever that has uh, sort of desecrated the population. She's managed to survive but it's sort of changed the way she lo looks and it also has given her this special power. So this is sounds like a dystopian but then it has this fantastical element in here with powers and I am a sucker for books that have to do with powers and of course with any good book anyone who has powers is immediately being persecuted by those in charge. It sounds like a really cool idea and so I hope that it's uh, done well because superpowers yeah. Next is a very popular book that you will immediately recognize and that is Isla and the Happily Ever After by Stephanie Perkins. I know many people have already read this book but I've been waiting to haul it before I actually read it because I know I could blow through it in no time. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen it everywhere, Isla is the third book in the companion series with Anna and the French Kiss and Lola and the Boy Next Door, both of which I have read and enjoyed. This one follows um, Isla of course and she was somebody who was introduced and Anna and the French Kiss. Honestly, I don't remember her at all, but I did read Anna a while ago, and it follows her sort of, you know, romantic interest in a boy named Josh and how that all plays out. Been hearing some, like, mixed feelings on this, so I'm not too sure how, you know, I'll feel once I'm finished, but, uh, we'll see. I am excited for past characters to pop up, but I feel like I should give Isla and Josh a chance and see how their story plays out. The second to last is I'll Give You the Sun by Jandy Nelson. This is another book that I've been hearing tons of hype about. It follows twins Jude and Noah through two distinct phases in their life. The first is you see is when they're 13 and they're still getting along and they still talk to each other and then something else, something happens and the second part of the book is them three years later when they're 16 and they're barely speaking they're not getting along, something something happened. And the first part of the story is told from one perspective, the second part is told from the other twin's perspective. So I'm looking forward to finding out what this thing is, and I really hope this book lives up to the hype. Side note, I love this cover, it's so pretty. Lastly is a book I received from the Penguin Press, and that is The Mockingbird Next Door by Maria Mills. There's a lot of controversy around this book, but before I talk about that, I think I should actually tell you what's going on here. So this book is, about Harper Lee and this Chicago Tribune journalist, Maria Mills, as it says on the inside cover, gained like exclusive access to Harper Lee's life. Harper Lee is the person who wrote To Kill a Mockingbird. She's never written another book and she's pr been pretty, you know, quiet about her life and it sounds like this woman wanted to just figure out like who is Harper Lee. From what I understand, it sounds like this journalist said, oh yes, I was given access, like Harper Lee welcomed me into her life with, you know, her and her sister opened their doors to me and let me spend time with them and learn about them. Whereas either right before this book was published or right after, Harper Lee basically came forward and said, no, we didn't give her this exclusive access that she claims that she got and this is like not this is an invasion of privacy. It's not a real account of stuff that happened, like she just kind of snuck her way into our lives. And so that's interesting, but I still wanted to see what happens in this book. It doesn't sound like it's a horrible book in the sense that, you know, she's talking down about Harper Lee. It sounds like she's very celebratory of this person, but I can understand, you know, with Harper Lee being a very private individual that something like this may seem just like too much. So. I still want to give the book a fair chance, see what I think, and then I can sort of understand the controversy around it a bit more. Those are the nine books that I'm adding to my little bookshelf here. If you guys have read any of these books and you want to talk about them, leave me a comment down below as well as if you have any questions about any of the books. As always, all of our links are in the doobly-doo. Check those out if you feel so inclined. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys later.